Hi guys, welcome back to um, the virtual Latin class. We're going to be doing the sentences you had for homework this weekend. Um, again, turn them into me, of course, but please check out these videos so you can make the corrections you need to make um, for the uh, for these sentences. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at this uh, first one. Uh, Marcus ver magnus et bonus coronum ad poetam portavit. All right. Now, first off, we have Marcus. First time we've seen that. That's obviously a noun and a proper noun at that. All right. And Marcus, same endings though as all the other second declension nouns. So that would be Marcus, which would have a nominative ending. So this is the subject of our sentence, right? So we have the nominative, singular, and masculine, all right? And it is the subject of our sentence. Now we have something interesting happening here, and we haven't seen this yet in any of our sentences, all right? We have something intriguing happening here, and that is um, we're. Now you look at we're, and that also is a noun. You'll recognize that, and you probably got confused a little bit because this also is in the nominative. All right, and it is singular and it is masculine. And yet, and yet, it's not the subject of our sentence, but it's also not a predicate nominative. So what is this? This is a unique construction, and we haven't seen this yet. This is called an appositive, all right? This word, weir, is an apposition to Marcus. Now, what does that mean? Um, it, it's, it's acting something like a predicate nominative, but without the linking verb. It's telling you more about the subject of the sentence, all right? This word is. So, Marcus is a man, all right? Marcus is a man. That's what it's telling you. The, the, the way the apposition works in English, if uh, you said, um, if Oliver said, John, my brother. My brother is an apposition to John. Oliver's brother's name is John. So, if he said, John, comma, my brother, that is an appositive in English. So you'll see that construction very often where they give you a little further explanation of who someone is to clarify who that person is. And Weir is doing that in this sentence. So you have Marcus Weir, a man. And he's like, well, of course, Marcus is a man. He's masculine. Um, but we also have this added on to it. Magnus et bonus. Okay? Magnus et bonus. Well, you recognize magnus and bonus both as adjectives. And they're limiting we're. And they're attributive adjectives in this particular case because magnus and bonus are both limiting we're. They're, they're modifying it directly. And magnus means great in this case and is a conjunction, coordinating conjunction, and it's linking um, two of these adjectives, bonus et magnus, okay? The coordinating conjunction et is linking that those two and bonus is also limiting where and this means good okay so the sentence would read something like marcus a great and good man marcus a great and good man so it's just telling you more about him not only is he marcus but he's a great and a good man and then we continue on with the rest of our sentence marcus is still the subject right and we come across coronum all right coronum and this is a noun again, and we know this means crown. And we look at this ending, and we say, okay, well, it's first declension, and it is accusative, and it is singular. So it is feminine, accusative, and singular, and it is the direct object. So Marco is do Marcos, excuse me, is doing something to the crown. The crown is being acted upon by the subject Marcos. Okay, so corona. All right, so that would be the direct object, the crown, all right? Now we have odd. Now you guys might remember this. This is a preposition. Odd is a preposition, and it governs the accusative case. It governs the accusative case. And we look then for an object, because it's prepositioned before the object. We look for the object of the preposition after it, and here we have poetam, all right? And poetam, we remember, also is a noun, Right, and it is masculine, and it is singular, and it is accusative. Masculine, singular, accusative. All right, and so we know that this is not the direct object, as coronum is, but the object of the preposition poetum. And this is called the accusative of place to which. 
the accusative of place to which. All right, where something is going to to the poet. So if we just read this um, as a direct Latin translation, Marcus, a man good, great and good, a crown to the poet we're waiting for. Remember the periodic style. So the verb is going to tie together the whole thing at the end. And here we have the verb, portawit. All right, portawit. And this verb, right, is a transitive verb. So it is the action is going out to the object. All right. So it's porto is our verb, which means to carry. All right. So you have portawit. Okay. Um, portawit. So what do we have here? Let's do the uh, person, number, and tense, and mood. Because this is just a straight sentence. This isn't a... A conditional sentence. This isn't a um, a, um, a purpose clause. This is just a straight Latin sentence. All right. So we have the person number and tense. We look at that T at the end, and we look at this stem. So the stem tells me uh, the the, the portawit. Excuse me. We look at the eat. We look at the stem. The stem tells me it's in the perfect system. Portawit. It's the third principal part. Right. And then we have this ending it which is unique ending of the perfect tense. E isti it, imus istis erunt. All right, and so we have portawit. And so this would be third person singular, perfect indicative. And again, they're all in the active voice. Perfect indicative. All right, so that means carried or has carried. So our whole sentence would be, Marcus, a man, great and good, the crown to the poet carried. How would we put that in English? Marcos, the great and good man, carried the crown to the poet. Or Marcos, the great and good man, car has carried the crown to the poet. Either one of those works, guys. And that is sentence five. And now we will turn around the board and through the magic of film editing, it will just suddenly appear. Okay, guys, welcome back for our next sentence, sentence four on page 58. i am already written one out here, guys. You know how we do this. We write the Romans. We read the English sentence, then we break it up into its individual parts. So the Romans very diligently. Now that is with great diligence. Please remember that if you were looking at that, they had that in parentheses for a reason because you have the adjective and the noun. But remember, I told you the, this is the ablative of man, or it can be translated as an adverb, all right, in this case, very diligently. Okay, so the Romans very diligently conquered the freemen with swords and the slaves with kindness. We have a, a double object here, double direct object. The freemen are being conquered and the slaves are being conquered, but they're being done and they're being conquered in different ways, so we'll see how that works. So like I said, the Romans is the subject. Um, the Roman people are doing the conquering, or the Roman men in particular. Um, so remember, this is an adjective in Latin, Roman. So it would be Romanus aum. Romanus aum. So we are going to use the masculine form. When it's, when it's not specific, we're going to use the masculine form. And we're going to say this is the subject of our sentence. We know the nominative renders that meaning in Latin. So it's the nominative plural, and it is um, uh, masculine. So we're going to use this form, and the nominative plural form there is Romani. Okay, Romani. So we go on to this one. Like I said before, this is with great diligence, a prepositional phrase in English, with great diligence, a prepositional phrase in English, all right, and interestingly, it has that construction in the Latin, the ablative of manner. See how it is in English. In English, uh, this is a adverb. Very is an adverb modifying diligently. Very diligently. Um, this is an adverb form. But when you when you try to get that meaning in Latin, you're going to use the ablative of manner. You're going to use a noun, an adjective construction, um, and not an adverb in this particular case. All right, so how would we express the idea very diligently or with great diligence? Through the ablative of manner, all right? And remember, if the, if the, if the uh, ablative of manner includes an adjective, and it does in this case with great, right, you don't need the 
preposition cum. So we're going to render this magna diligentia. Magna diligentia with a macron on the A. Magna diligentia. Now we come to our next part of the sentence, which is our verb, which will likely stand last in our Latin translation. But if you didn't do that, remember, I, I never take off for that. All right. You have conquered. And the word for conquer is supero. All right. Supero, superawi, arare. It's a first conjugation. And superawi. We'll stop there because that's all we need. Because the, the, the form I would like you to use in this particular one would be the perfect. Okay. So we're going to start with that stem. You could have used the imperfect. All right, and I would not have marked off for that, but I want to use the perfect here. All right, um, because I think it better expresses the meaning here. So we have super uh, v with the v, and we're going to add the unique endings for the perfect tense, and that would be erunt, super erunt, and that is our perfect endings. Okay, the Romans, the plural. This is third plur plural, and they conquered. The Romans are the they. So the Romans with great diligence, conquered, all right? Now, you could have said superabant, and I would not have taken off of that. If you have superabant in your translation, you're okay. So who do they conquer? Okay, obviously this action has to go out to an object. You have to conquer something. So the action of conquering goes out to an object, and in this case, it's the free men. Well, free men, wait, was that in our vocabulary? Yes, because we have an adjective, right? Liber. Liber, libera, liberum. Okay? Liber, liba, liberum. So we have the same deal that we had with the subject. We have the Romans, which is the adjective Romanus, and we have liber, which is the adjective for free. So we're going to look at this and say, okay, we have free men. So it's plural, there's men, and it's men, so it's masculine. So we should be looking for the, uh, the accusative, because it's the direct object, of conquered, the accusative, masculine, and plural. So you should have liberos, liberos. That should be the form you have there. Now, how did they conquer them, or what did they use to conquer them, all right? What did the Romans use to conquer the free men? They used swords, with swords. Now, this in Latin is not the ablative of manner, this is the ablative of means or instrument. This is what they use to conquer the freemen. This is not, in that sense, it's what did they use to conquer? Um, the, the, what instruments did they use? They use the instruments of swords. This one does not have the preposition. You will not have the preposition in the Latin. And you will just simply use the ablative plural of swords, right? This is a noun. Gladius gladii, it's second, uh, second declension. So you would simply write gladiis, gladiis. That would be the ablative. No cum, not on the ablative of means or instrument. Okay, now we have and again, which is a coordinating conjunction. Um, and it is uh, translated as et. You could, if you wanted to, um, Add the que on to slave. Some of you might have done that. You could have used the enclitic conjunction, que. But most of you will probably use at. If you used um, uh, que, I will show you how that would work, okay? Um, but in any case, well, actually, it would be, work better here as with at. Because, actually, use at, not que. You can't really use que. And the reason you can't is because this is, in a sense, a second clause. It's repeating that first clause, Okay. Um, so, and the slaves. So in this case, we would have servos because we're, we're, the thing being linked are the two direct objects, okay? The slaves and the slaves, right? Servos, and that would be, again, masculine, plural, and accusative. And then how are they being conquered? This is the manner in which they're being conquered, not the, the means or instrument. The manner they conquered them is with kindness. They, they, they did not attack them with an actual instrument. They, uh, they, they, they presented a kind aspect to them. They were very kind to the slaves. Um, uh, so, with kindness. Now, this one does not have an adjective like magna diligentia. So, you will use the cum with this one. 
kum kindness, all right, uh, kum, uh, kum, with kindness, with kindness. And that would be, again, wenia wenii, so you would just say wenia, all right, wenia with the makron on the A. So your sentence would read, Romani, magna diligentia, liberos gladis et servos cum venia superaverunt, or superabant. All right? That's if you put it last. If you just put it in this word order, that's fine. So those are the sentences uh, for this Monday, and I hope you did well on